Hello, friends. Today, we'll be talking about unbelievable tragedies in national parks. On this channel, we talk a lot about the missing people all over the world, and especially here in our national parks in the United States. What many people don't realize is that there are so many other tragedies that happen on an almost daily basis that hardly anyone ever hears about. Now, these aren't always fatalities. Sometimes it's minor accidents and injuries. What we are presenting to you in this video, though, are those tragedies that end in a person or persons being deceased. What could have been done to prevent these disasters? Well, in each case, there's something different, and maybe, in some, even there was nothing that could have helped to prevent such atrocious acts of nature being brought about. Are these things being brought on by unseen forces? Are there other things at play here than just terrible accidents of nature? Let's begin. In Arches National Park in 2020 in the state of Utah, United States, a woman named Esther Nakajigo, known as Essie, and her new husband, Ludovic Michaud, known as Ludo, had left their campsite and gone to get some ice cream. What a simple act, having a hankering for something sweet while out and about exploring the wilderness. The fact these two were newlyweds just makes the story all the more tragic and bittersweet. It was a Saturday, and the weather forecast called for a high of 95 and a low of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Bright, sunny skies, just driving along eating their ice cream and enjoying each other's company, like only a newly married couple can. All of a sudden, though, a strong wind blew in and an unsecured gate sliced through the car like a knife through hot butter, according to an administrative claim that was filed in October the same year. The gate missed Ludo by only an inch or less, but unfortunately, dear sweet Essie was not as lucky. An internationally recognized women's rights activist, originally from Uganda, the gate decapitated her in just an instant. In a split second, she lost her life. And her husband, originally from Paris, but now living in Denver, Colorado, is now a widower. What makes this tragedy even more unbelievable is the fact that but for the price of a dollar store padlock, Essie's life could have been saved. At the age of just 17, she was rising to fame after being named the ambassador to women and girls in her home country. She was using the money she earned from this position to put herself through college and fund a nonprofit community health facility for women in the poor third world country. In the blink of an eye, her young and meaningful life was taken away and her family is absolutely devastated, even going as far as to file a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the Parks and Recreation Services. It makes us wonder if going missing isn't the only way the unknown forces we speak of so often that are lurking in our woods, forests, and national parks can take such a meaningful and precious young life. It seems like there's something out there that just doesn't want us, or certain people anyway, in the woods. Also in June, but a few years earlier, 2016, a man named Colin Nathaniel Scott from Portland, Oregon, slipped and fell into a hot spring in Yellowstone National Park. Now, Yellowstone is the country's first ever national park. It spans almost 3,500 miles and is mainly located in the state of Wyoming, but even runs into parts of Montana and Idaho. The park is beautiful, with geysers shooting water over 100 feet in the air, mud spots, and waterfalls that will take your breath away. These are surely some of the things that drew Colin to Yellowstone in the first place. He had no idea these very things, these beautiful and breathtaking creations of nature, would end his life that hot day in June 2016. Colin's sister was recording him with her cell phone when he attempted to do something which is actually not legal in the park. He strayed off the designated boardwalk in the Norris Geyser Basin that bright and sunny Tuesday morning. Now, waters there can reach as high as 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 Celsius. Colin was literally boiled alive. He slipped and fell in accidentally while attempting to hot pot or soak in one of the park's thermal pools. According to the deputy chief ranger, the whole area is geothermically active. There's a closure in place to protect people from doing that for their own safety. It's a very unforgiving environment. The that being soaking in the hot spots as Colin was allegedly attempting to do. That same ranger Mr. Laurent Veras 
alleges that Colin and his sister were purposefully ignoring the many posted warning signs despite the obvious potential for real danger. His sister recorded Colin as he reached down to test the water with his finger and he slipped and fell in, being boiled alive as she watched on in horror, completely helpless to do anything but scream for help. Thankfully, his death was almost instantaneous once he fell in. He didn't suffer. But there was never any hope of rescue. An unforgiving environment indeed. Rescue teams located his body later on that day. However, due to approaching inclement weather, which we see often in missing persons cases, mainly a lightning storm, they were unable to retrieve his body without risking very significant danger to their own safety and even to their very lives. So, unfortunately, the recovery effort was held off until the next day. But by the following day, however, search and rescue were unable to find any significant remains of the unfortunate young man who just wanted to have an adventure in one of the most beautiful and scenic places in all the United States. Mr. Veras said, Unfortunately, there was a very significant amount of dissolving. He truly was boiled alive. Next, we have 63-year-old Robert Boardman who was hiking with his wife and a friend in Olympic National Park in Washington State. He had to be rushed by the Coast Guard in a helicopter to a hospital in Port Angeles where he was pronounced dead on arrival after being gored in the leg by a wild mountain goat. Mountain goats are not native but were introduced into this area in the 1920s and can actually become quite tolerant of the close approach of humans. The problem is, once this happened, they become habituated and lose their natural fear of us, and then they are apt to try and start asserting dominance over us, which could lead to an attack just like this. Although normally not aggressive, it is recommended that you stay at least 50 feet away from them at all times and never ever urinate on a trail where there's a potential for mountain goats. Also, people who are sweating, as I'm sure one would do during a hike on a hot spring or sunny day, will also accidentally lure the goat to them as these particular goats crave salt which are found in our urine and sweat. This particular goat, however, is said to have been known for its aggressive behavior, but was only killed after it had already attacked Gord and killed Robert Boardman. According to a park spokesman named Barb Maines, rangers had previously tried hazing the goat, which means they tried to induce it to be frightened by human beings again by shooting it with beanbags and throwing rocks at it. She claimed that, though they knew the goat had been aggressive before this incident, she also stated that there were no incidents which warranted putting it down until Robert's unfortunate incident. Witnesses said that Robert, his wife, and their mutual friend were having lunch on Klahani Ridge when the goat started to approach them. It had gone unnoticed up to this point. Robert tried simply shooing away the animal, but it attacked him instead of fleeing. After goring him in the leg, which ruptured an artery, the goat simply stood over him so no one else was able to approach him until a ranger hit it with a few rocks and it turned to finally flee. Olympic mountain goats are only found in North America and there are approximately 300 of them in this particular national park. The usual height and weight for one of these beautiful yet possibly deadly creatures is standing around 3 feet tall and weighing up to 300 pounds. Next, on Monday, May 3rd, 2021, Mason Stansfield, a 28-year-old from Ure, Colorado, lost his life after falling into a crevice of a glacier in Denali National Park and Preserve in Alaska. Mountaineering rangers received a report from a satellite communication device that a skier had fallen into a crevice. Mason, who is an experienced skier, mountaineer, and also a mountain guide, was skiing with his partner, who reported she could not see or communicate with him once he had fallen in but alerted the authorities as quickly as she possibly could to try and get rescue out there before he passed away. Rescue was able to reach the scene and respond within just a half hour of the call for help going out, but unfortunately Mason died upon impact after falling and being found 100 feet below the glacier's surface. Mason's partner wasn't injured, thankfully, but she was taken to a nearby hospital just as a precaution. His remains were located that same day. A spokesman for the park stated that the accident had happened on a tributary glacier that flows into the main Eldridge Glacier. 
Mason had even done some mountain guide work on this same mountain in Denali before. He was a certified rock guide through the American Mountain Guide Association and had spent the last six years of his life working as a mountain guide out of Colorado's San Juan Range as well as in other parts of Alaska. This just goes to show you that accidents can happen to anyone regardless of their skill level and you have to be not only experienced but extremely careful and cautious whenever you're out in a place where you could end up being up against Mother Nature. In November of 2000, in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, rangers made a horrific discovery when they came across the bodies of an unidentified man and woman who were deceased and in an advanced state of decomposition. The pair were found near a spot where lava from the Kilauea volcanic eruption flows out into the sea. When this happens, plumes of steaming white sea foam erupt into the air in a glorious show of nature. The area, which is aptly named Eruption Site, is scattered with a glassy volcanic rock called tephra. Tephra are formed and then ejected into the air, quite violently, when the more than 3600 degree Fahrenheit, 2000 Celsius degree, lava is sated by the seawater. The bodies were located approximately 330 feet inland from the eruption site and showed no visible signs of trauma. It was first assumed that they had been struck and killed by the flying tephra, but later on during autopsy, this was determined not to be the case. The final autopsy report was released two days later and showed the cause of death was actually pulmonary edema or swelling of the lungs. This was apparently due to them inhaling the hydrochloric acid fumes that come off the lava. The autopsy also showed that the advanced decomposition was due to acid rain, as the skin was either exposed to air or only covered by a single layer of clothing, it began to break down, but this was not due to the natural occurrence of post-mortem decay. All manner of toxic gases are released by the lava itself. These gases can include carbon dioxide, hydrofluoric acid, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide, and when the lava which releases these interacts with the seawater, which we know is what puts it out as it flows into the waves, a bunch of other gases are produced. The highly corrosive hydrochloric acid being one of them. In the 10 years between 1992 and 2002, there were 45 serious injuries and 45 fatalities reported within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And this doesn't even include the minor injuries also reported in each of those years. From seemingly simple and somewhat common culprits and also from some extremely strange and bizarre means as well. In 2002, stricter safety guidelines were implemented and efforts to better educate tourists about safety when visiting the islands and their volcanoes were put into effect. Unfortunately, this was too little too late for this deceased pair, who still have no name to date. Next, the body of Patrick Madura, a 43-year-old man from Elgin, Illinois, was found deceased and being eaten by a black bear in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Patrick had been camping alone, but it is yet undetermined whether or not the bear had mauled and killed him, or he had died of some other cause and the bear just happened to stumble across his remains. Patrick had a backcountry camping reservation for a multi-night trip and was scheduled to stay alone in the Hazel Creek area until September 8, 2020. Three days after he was supposed to have vacated site number 82, backpackers came across the empty tent and discovered a bear not too far away scavenging his remains. The bear was found to be very healthy and weighing about 231 pounds. Now, the Great Smoky Mountains are the home to approximately 1,500 bears, most of which are not known to behave aggressively toward humans. On the rare occasion, a bear does show a propensity for aggression and shows a high risk or threat to visitor safety, it's euthanized by park services. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is visited by approximately 11 million people per year and the park implements aversive conditioning techniques for the bears by working hard to ensure that they don't become food conditioned or habituated to high use areas. This tragedy took place in September of 2020 and as of yet there have been no autopsy results publicly released concluding whether or not the bear was the cause of Mr. Madura's tragic death. The bear in this case was put down by park rangers. An Israeli teenager tragically died just two months past his 18th birthday in Yosemite National Park in California on September 4, 2018. 
Math student Tomer Frankfurter from Jerusalem was on another adventure as the outgoing teen headed to America before starting his compulsory service in the Israeli army. Tomer joined a group of other tourists who were headed to the Mist Trail. This is a rigorous 5.4 mile hiking route which takes travelers to the cliffs directly above the Nevada Falls, which is 594 feet high. After finishing the hike to the top and stopping to take in the breathtaking scenery and views from there, the group had lunch and decided to head back. This is when Tomer took off his backpack and handed it to another hiker, saying he wanted to pose for a memorable photograph before they left. He then proceeded to climb over the cliff's edge in order to take the ultimate selfie. Other hikers in the group were terrified and began shouting for Tomer not to do it and to come back away from the edge. In the blink of an eye, everything changed. Within just seconds, he was dangling hundreds of feet above the jagged and deadly rocks below. Before the others in the group could even realize something was wrong, Tomer started shouting for help. Everyone ran to his aid and tried to pull him up and back over the edge. They pulled him by his arms and wrists with all their might However, he was unfortunately sweating profusely and slipped right out of their grasp. The group of tourists watched in horror as the young, intelligent man with his whole entire life ahead of him fell hundreds of feet to his death. Tomer had graduated early from high school and at the time of his death had already completed two years of college at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He was in the United States only a visit for a few weeks and was staying with a friend who lived in Fresno, California. He had gone to the park that day with the friend he was staying with, but had somehow become separated when Tomer met up with another group of students from Israel, Germany, and a few other countries on the shuttle bus in the park. The large group of students then all decided to hike the mist trail together. Tomer had explained to these other kids that he was waiting for the perfect opportunity to duplicate a photo taken by tourists in Brazil, one they commonly take at a place there called Telegraph Rock near Rio de Janeiro. Visitors there hang from an outcropping, making it appear as though they are thousands of feet above the ground. In reality, though, these photos are taken only approximately three feet above a trail. It's a trick of the camera, and it's unknown whether or not Tomer was aware of this when he risked his life to duplicate the photo and take the ultimate selfie. Unfortunately, there was nothing that anyone could do. The young man had died on impact. In six years between 2011 and 2017, Approximately 259 people all around the world have died while attempting to take selfies. Their average age was 23, and three-quarters of them were male, according to a study published in the Journal of Family Medicine and Primary Care. The most common cause of death for these people was drowning, with most being swept into the ocean by large waves. The second was transportation accidents, like being hit by a bus or train, and the third largest cause of selfie deaths was falling from extremely high heights. It was suggested by a Vietnam vet and platoon sergeant who is also an expert in hiking and a tour guide among wilderness trails in areas as diverse as Rwanda and the Grand Canyon named Michael Giglieri that Yosemite and other national parks update their cautions of danger with today's youth and technology in mind, perhaps even mentioning taking care and maybe even thinking twice before taking selfie photographs. The Yosemite Park Service declined to comment on Tomer's death or any part of the incident except to say they will not be taking Giglieri's advice anytime in the near future and will not be updating their safety signs and warnings. Finally, in April of 2019, a 69-year-old woman plunged 200 feet to her death in Grand Canyon National Park. Rangers responded to a call for help on the Grand Canyon Rim, however the rescuers just couldn't get to the woman in time. Her body was found below a rocky point near Pipe Creek Vista on the south rim. A group of approximately 15 rescuers used a park helicopter to recover her remains. Cynthia Ackley lived in the Phoenix suburb of Peoria in Arizona, United States. Cynthia's was just one of the many deaths that take place due to accidental falls in not just Grand Canyon National Park, but in parks all over the country. In Cynthia's case, a rare weather event caused by warm and cold masses combining caused a total cloud inversion which filled the entire Grand Canyon with clouds in a short amount of time and this is what is believed to be the reason she fell so quickly and without any warning. Well, there you have it, folks. 
What do you make of these sad, strange deaths? If you do go to the national parks this summer, be careful. Don't take risks. Obey those signs. They're there for a reason. We want you to go and enjoy yourself in our national parks, forests, and wilderness areas, but live to tell the tale. Thanks for listening. I look forward to reading your comments. In the meanwhile, be good to yourselves and each other. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.